Hey folks, Eric here from Avid CNC. Our laser systems can allow you to combine both laser cutting and etching and router work in one job. These lasers are compatible with our new EX controller, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up our laser to work with your new EX control, and also how to design and create tool paths for a job like this that combines laser and routing. So stick around and we're gonna dive right in and figure it all out. This video is gonna assume that you have your laser physically mounted and wired into your new EX control system. If you don't, you can go to avidcnc.com support and you can get instructions there to make all of the connections to your new controller. To set up your laser, from the main screen of CNC12, click on Utility menu. From there, click on Acorn Wizard. This will bring up the Acorn Wizard. Along the left side, you'll see a section marked Accessories. Click it. The first option on the top will be Laser. When you select that, the Laser Setup screen will be shown. The Laser Setup menu features dropdowns for all of Avid's laser offerings. If you don't see your laser offering here, check our website for a software update. If you do, just pick the laser that you have from the dropdown, and that's all you need to do. All of the settings are applied for you. If you do have a custom laser, you can go ahead and select custom and set the settings here that match the settings that your laser manufacturer calls for. If you'd like, you can select warn before firing laser. In this way, you'll get a warning every time the laser fires and you'll have to press cycle start to fire the laser. This can be a nice added safety benefit. The next option is to warn about laser air pressure. You're gonna want this setting turned on because your deployment requires air to deploy and use, and if you don't have your air turned on, you'll get a warning about that. The last setting is the laser nozzle Z offset. Some lasers are offered with different nozzle sizes that you can choose from, and it's important to make sure you have the setting right so the Z offset of your laser is applied appropriately. The last setting to take a look at is the laser tool number and XY offset. The laser tool number is the number that is called when your laser deploys. So if you create tool paths in your cam software and you want to use the laser, the tool number in your cam software needs to match this number here. Unless you have a reason to, it's good just to leave it at 99. The XY offset is the distance that the laser sits next to and in front of or behind the spindle. And this can depend on how you have it mounted. Uh, this is set up with an automatic calibration, which we'll go through in the next step. But if you did want to come back and make minor tweaks to that XY offset, you would do that here. Now that we've made all these settings, we can click right settings to CNC control configuration. It'll process for a moment and then a message is going to come up and ask you to restart your controller. Make sure you follow the steps and come back and power back on your controller and we will continue to laser calibration. Calibrating the offset from the tip of the laser to the tip of the tool in your spindle is important because that's what allows seamless switching back and forth between laser and routing. To train this offset, we're gonna go into the utils menu from the main screen in CNC 12. And then we're gonna pick option number five, which is diode laser utilities. Once we hit five and press enter, we'll be taken to this menu where we can pick different calibration utilities. Here, we're gonna to wanna to calibrate the laser XY offset. That's option number one. So we hit one, press enter, and then cycle start. And this will launch the utility that will help you calibrate the distance between the tip of the laser and the spindle. For best results, it's recommended that you chuck in a V-bit like I'm doing here. Now you're gonna get a message that says, jog around by hand and make a mark with the tool in the spindle. So here I'm jogging that V-bit slowly and carefully into the spoil board. And once it's just touching, I'll spin that tip around by hand to dig a little mark into the spoil board. Once I've done that, I will press cycle start and the laser will now deploy. You'll then get a warning that the laser is about to fire. Before you press cycle start, make sure your laser control box is armed so that the laser will come on when you press cycle start. After pressing cycle start, you'll see the laser come on and you'll wanna carefully guide it into that mark that we just made with the spindle. You may need to lower it in Z a little closer to the work surface to get the laser dot to become finer. Once you have it placed in that mark, press cycle start and the laser offset will be trained. Once those offsets are trained, you can go back and look in the wizard and you can see where they're applied. 
If you did want to make some fine adjustments to the offsets, you can do that here. Next, we're going to set the height of our laser by using our work surface as a reference. To get this process started, we're going to go to the Utils menu, and then we're going to select 5 for Diode Laser Utilities. And once we're in that menu, we're going to select option 2, which is Calibrate Laser Tool Height. The process will start by bringing your Z all the way to the top and then deploying the laser. You'll be asked to slowly jog the laser down so the nozzle is just skimming the work surface. Once it's there, press Cycle Start to confirm and the laser will actually pop up just a little bit. Each laser needs a special focal height and that focal height is set in the wizard. What this message is showing you is that it brought the laser up from the work surface that focal height and it's asking you to confirm that that is the focal height that you want. You can see here in the wizard the focal height for this particular laser is just a little bit over 5 millimeters. This looks good, so I'm going to push Y for yes. Another feature in the diode laser utilities is the ability to switch back to your previous spindle tool. You can select this option by number 4 in the diode laser utilities and this will retract the laser and switch you back to whatever tool number you were on before using the laser without forcing you to go to the touch plate. This can be nice if you're in between laser jobs and you want to use your spindle to use the touch plate utility to line up your next job. And in that same menu, you can go and you can deploy the laser as well. So again, in the diode laser utilities, select option number three, and that will deploy the laser and switch to the laser tool number for you automatically. All right, so we're gonna take a look at how to create router and laser tool paths all in one job using vCarve or Aspire. Uh, this is gonna assume you have some basic knowledge of these programs and have used them to make a few basic cuts. So let's take a look at the existing toolpaths that I have here for this job, and then we'll go through uh, setting up a laser tool and creating your own toolpaths. So this toolpath to make this job had a variety of different routing operations. It had some drill holes, uh, some pockets for the magnets. It has a pocket over here for the battery. And these are all very traditional toolpaths. Uh, this battery pocket was just done with an end mill. Uh, 0.2 inches deep, uh, a little bit deeper here for where the caliper sets in. Um, you know, pretty simple stuff. And then the laser tool paths here, where we are cutting out or rather engraving uh, some text and the chevrons here, we're done using the Vectric laser module. So if you have the laser module added onto VCarve or Aspire, you get these two buttons here. One is laser cut and fill, which is what I used in this job, and the other one is laser picture. So if we take a look at one of these laser cut tool paths here, we'll check out the chevrons. Uh, you can see I did this at power level 20% at 120 inches per minute. I did one pass. I have an overscan setting set, and that means when the laser goes back and forth, it's going to shoot past each chevron a little bit. And that just makes the laser burn more consistent and gives the machine time to slow down, uh, turn a corner, speed up, and come back. And I had this thing do a hatch, which is to fill in the chevrons, and I turned it at 45 degrees. That's just what I prefer, uh, rather than going left and right. It goes along with the chevrons. And that's it. These toolpaths are actually not that hard to set up. We can take a quick look here at the one for the text and pretty much the same thing. Uh, this, it does not fill in. It just cuts on these lines. And these were simply text elements that I created uh, with the text tool right here in Aspire. So let me show you how to set up a laser as a tool. So you'll need to do this before you set up any of these tool paths. And the way you do that is you go to tool paths and tool database. And this is going to bring up your tool database. And you can see here that I've got several numbered tools uh, that are my regular spindle tools. And I've got one here for my laser cutter. So to make a new one, all you have to do is just hit plus. And for the tool type, uh, pick laser cutter. And we're going to do units inches. We'll say the max power. Uh, let's do our 15 watt laser. So we'll say 15 watts. 
um, and we'll go ahead and copy the settings. Uh, the laser kerf I know to be 0 .007, so that's okay. Uh, we'll leave number of passes at one because you can change that uh, per tool path. Power level at 100%, that's fine. And the fastest I usually burn with a 15 watt laser is about 150 uh, inches per minute, so we'll change these settings. And the laser tool number uh, is typically left at 99. That is our default laser tool number uh, for our control systems. Um, you would only need to change this away from 99 if you had specifically changed it in the control for some reason. So for most people, uh, leaving this at 99 is just fine. And that's it. Now we have another laser cutter added into our tool database. So to make a tool path, um, it's really simple. So I'll just recreate this Chevron toolpath we have down here. And to do that, I just click on the laser cut and fill toolpath. You'll see here at the top, the 15 watt laser is already selected. So I can go ahead and set these power and feed speeds here. I'll go ahead and select the Chevrons here and I'll burn these at 20% at 120 uh, inches per minute. That sounds fine. We'll do one pass. If I did more than one pass, that would just do the same tool path twice. So it can give a darker burn. Say you have a, a lower powered laser and you want it to run twice. That's how you would do that. Um, we want it to cut on the path and we want to do a hatch fill. So I'm going to do fill together. So it just fills all of these chevrons at once and We'll leave it at 45 degrees here. And I would like this to also do an outline, so to go around the outside. And that's it. We can just hit Calculate, and there is our toolpath. And when we're done, we can select all of these toolpaths and save them as one job. And what's really nice about this is you can see my drill tool has a tool number. Uh, my magnet pocket, all of these different tool paths have a tool number because they are using tools that have numbers assigned to them. And you can see here our laser tool paths have tool number 99 assigned to them. So I can save all of these tool paths to one file and they will run each tool run after the other, It'll ask you to insert the tool. And when it gets to the laser, it will automatically deploy the laser, apply that XY offset and do your lasering for you automatically. Um, you don't have to manually apply the XY offset. You don't even need to use a special post processor. You can use the regular built-in post processor uh, in either metric or imperial. Uh, that is for all EX controls. So creating tool paths, uh, really, really simple here in VCarve and Aspire. Well, thanks everybody for watching and we hope this helps you get up and running with your new laser on your EX control system. If you have any questions, please go to avidcnc.com support. Thanks.